All right. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm at 10 o'clock, I believe. Yep, you're all set. Okay, so I will call this uh, Sunday County Commissioner's meeting to order for Thursday, March the 4th. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Anthony, would you like to uh, lead us in prayer this morning? Sure. Welcome everyone. Um, dear God, we wanna thank you for uh, bringing us together today. Uh, we wanna thank you for all the great people and organizations in the county that we all live and work at. Uh, School of Opportunity and uh, their effort with developmental disabilities is such a gem, such a, an asset to our community. We wanna welcome all the, the people that are on the call that represent uh, or that are part of uh, TIP and Developmental Center. Uh, we ask that uh, uh, you look over this meeting and uh, uh, shine upon us. Amen. 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 Okay, Nikki, how about a roll call this morning? We might be having technical difficulties. Uh, okay. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Kirshner, okay. there she goes. Yeah, yeah, all right. Go ahead, Nikki. I, oh, I am here. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Sorry, my computer keeps lagging really bad and saying I don't. Yeah, it's still doing it. Connection. Um, Commissioner Paradiso? Present. Commissioner Schuff? Here. Okay. That's good. Hopefully it goes smoother as the uh, meeting goes on here. We have uh, an event that we do every year, and we look forward to it all the time. The only thing that, that makes me sad is that we can't uh, have some of these folks sit up in the commissioner's chairs yeah. and be commissioners for a day. That's always... Uh, that's always a lot of fun. So, Lou, I assume you're on the line. Uh, would you like to uh, kick off the uh, Opportunity Center to talk about Developmental Disabilities Month? Sure, and I'm going to have some of my guests uh, talk about some of the things as well. But we're excited to be here. I want to thank you for taking the time to join us today uh, to celebrate March as Developmental Disability Awareness Month. Our theme this month or this year is for, the th for the Disability Awareness Month is Seneca County Strong. We picked that because over the past years, we have been through a lot of challenges in terms of COVID and trying to figure out how to make sure people with the developmental disabilities are getting services. And we've had to be very innovative and we are so blessed to be in a great community where we can partner with many partners that enabled us to serve people in a variety of different ways. And I do think even after COVID is over, some of those ways will continue because it really is created opportunities for folks. So for example, one of our relationships with Tiff, uh, Tiffin Public Library, where we did virtual book readings and a virtual book club where people could uh, read a book together through uh, Zoom and uh, Trinity at the library would talk with the folks and help coordinate that. And that's just one small example of many different things, but we've got a lot of things planned this month uh, uh, to uh, 
focus on providing support to people with disabilities and creating awareness. And so before I introduce some of the other individuals, I just want to say that we have uh, very sad that we can't host the celebrity game. We're not saying it's canceled because we're hoping we could do it in the fall. Um, if everybody can get vaccinated and we can get back to some normal life, I think it has become such a hallmark of the community and a great way. It's one of the best ways where people could actually see that individuals with disabilities are just like everybody else. They have strengths and weaknesses, and some of them are much better basketball players than I am. Um, but it also is fun to watch the community members come out and get to meet folks with disabilities and, and build relationships. And, and so we're sad for that. But we do have uh, something that I think Marta is going to talk more about, but we have replaced it this year with a virtual scavenger hunt. And we're really excited about that opportunity. Um, like I said, we're very blessed to be in Seneca County. I, I do think we have many challenges ahead of us. Um, but I think we have a community that supports people with developmental disabilities. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Marta. I just want to start off by saying thank you for welcoming us today um, at your meeting. It's always our you know, favorite time of year, March is DD Awareness Month, but um, just as Commissioner Kirshner was saying, we miss um, being in person. Uh, that opportunity is just wonderful. You can't replace it, but um, we do appreciate you allowing us to, to be on your Zoom today. So actually the events um, that we have lined up for March, I'm gonna have my friends um, Patrick and Ryan help share about that and I can jump in if needed. And then I also wanna point out that Patrick um, has another guest in his screen um, and it's actually his staff, Joe Coleman. So I wanna give a shout out to Joe because a lot of times um, people do not realize the, the supports behind the scenes. And so Joe is integral um, to the service delivery system in Seneca County. Um, he makes things work and he actually provides the direct care support um, to people with disabilities. So with that, Patrick, would you like to go first? I, I know you might have something else prepared as well. Right. 2021 DG Awareness Service and Hunt will host with the through March 8th to 30th. Yep. So the hunt um, is it starts on the 8th. So we will not have our signs placed until the 8th. Um, Patrick, is there anything else you want to share about that event? And they would all have all, all welcome teams, content of two to five people. This is all 18 locations to let the awareness of letters and send us your hot photos for all your teams, chance to win, and awesome prize. And they can start the hunt there. And, you, and also, there's a hunt. You get an entry seat at www.senatordg.org or SCOC's Facebook page. Yep, so that's where you get your entry forms is either the um, website or our Facebook, or you can contact Natalie Ranker, and we have her contact information on the flyer as well. And as Patrick said, there's awesome prizes. Uh, we do encourage people to um, participate in groups of two to five, so as teams, mm -hmm. and there are 18 locations, um, all featured in Seneca County, mostly in the Tiffin area, um, but they all feature a story or a connection with the Opportunity Center. So as Lou said, uh, featuring our strong relationships with our community and really highlighting that while sharing the story of the Opportunity Center and the amazing people that we serve. Patrick, is there anything else you'd like to share about DD Awareness Month? DG Awareness Month is always in March. And we'll have a rotary visitation at noon on March 9th. And the March 11th of both days, Marcos Unity First Racer and uh, Kiwanis presentation at noon, all the same day on the March 11th. So Patrick, <clears throat> sharing our calendar, I think Ryan was going to share a couple of those things. I saw Ryan's eyes light up. <laughs> Patrick, <laughs> Patrick, would you um, let Ryan maybe share a couple of those? Go ahead. Or, thank you, Patrick. You're welcome. <laughs> we got the Seneca Strong t-shirts for sale at the Opportunity Center. And Friday's the last day that you could buy them. And we got the Palm Sunday 
dinner on the 28th of this month. And everything else that Patrick was talking about. Ryan, is there anything else you'd like to add about DD Awareness Month? I'm going to miss not being able to be around my friends at the, at the college. For the celebrity game? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the same. And we do, we do so many different things around the, the county, too. Yeah, we're very blessed to live in Seneca County. Um, you know, our relationships are so strong. And I know that the commissioners, I always see you guys at the game and supporting us. So we want to extend our sincere thank you for that. Thank you. And especially when we had the pe some of the people come up from the state house, they'll come up and play in it sometimes too. You know, and just to do a kind of a quick overview of our services, we start with children birth through three at early intervention. We do provide early intervention services to about 70, 70 to 80 families. Our goal is to work with the kids in their homes to help the kids catch up with developmental delays. And hopefully we won't see them again. But for those kids that are more profoundly disabled, we have a school age program uh, where we have about 53 students um, partnering with the local school districts to make sure that that happens. Um, and then as those kids grow up, we have a whole adult world that a lot of people don't know about. So we have the adult services program here in Tiffin. We also contract with private providers to provide both day services, employment services, and then also residential services. Those provider networks employ about, I think, Marta, did you say, what was the number you gave me, the most recent number? 250. 250 employees throughout Seneca County. And that's not including the folks that are employed through the Opportunity Center as well. So we are a larger employer, but those services are needed services that really are there to help improve the lives of people with disabilities. And um, you may see uh, like uh, different, if I could talk today, I can't talk today, I'm sorry. Um, different vans driving around like ECI. The ECI exists because we contract with them to provide residential services. Um, as part of the developmental center's downsizing projects, the Tiffin Developmental Center, which is managed and run by the state, has really started to downsize uh, their programming, their footprint, and have increased three homes in Seneca County, um, which are managed and operated by CRSI, which is an in independent provider. But we're, pro we're responsible for providing oversight to that home. So what we are seeing is a transition of of additional responsibilities to our program as the state removes itself from some of those services. Um, we Flat Rock in the corner of Seneca, in the Northeast corner of Seneca County is an ICFMR that provides services. We work with them. Capabilities is a private day hab provider, um, ResCare, Chrysalis, PAL, New Visions, uh, Future Horizons, Renaissance Home, Winreath, there is a whole slew of different agencies that we work with. And um, we're happy that we have great relationships. We are struggling like everybody in, in finding staff. That seems to be our biggest crisis, our biggest challenge. In order to provide supports in the community, we need to recruit staff. And um, that has been a continuous thing at the state budget. And again, as we all know, the state loves to pass responsibilities down locally and specifically funding. They get to set the rates and we get to pay for it. Um, but we are expecting in this budget cycle additional, additional rate increases to try to get direct support professionals um, because there's such a demand. And, and I, I know that if you have a parent that needs services in the elderly system, they are struggling. Everybody is struggling in finding staff. So we are working with our providers to recruit and uh, help establish and maintain their, their staffing base as well. So I don't want to, I can go on and on. I don't want to take too much time and I don't want to take uh, time away from the individuals, but I know our individuals really love and look forward to this every year. I'm very thankful the commissioners have been very involved and very supportive of our program. And um, I just, you know, from the, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all that you do for our community. Lou, we appreciate that. And of course, it's right back at you. You guys do a yeoman's job when it comes to taking care of those folks. 
in our community who need it. We appreciate it and we will be there to support you whenever we can. Okay, uh, any questions? Uh, I'll kind of open it up uh, right now in case there are any questions from the general population uh, as it relates to uh, the Opportunity Center or Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. If anyone would, uh, would like to have any questions, I'm sure that Lou would answer. I'm sure Patrick would be happy to answer them. Anyone else out there might. Anything, Jimmy, and the okay. I don't see anything, Commissioner Hugh. Okay, let's move on. Um, I do need. Uh, I, I I don't believe that uh, I've had a motion to accept the and approve the digital audio video recording of our previous meeting from February twenty fifth. So I would accept a motion to do that. So moved. Thank Second. you. Thank you, Nikki. Stacy, yeah. <laughs> I believe we're all in agreement. Yes, I can see Commissioner by... Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Perdiso? Yes. Commissioner Shaw? Yes. Okay. And we do have a proclamation for the uh, Opportunity Center as well. I think uh, Commissioner Shaw's going to read that. Yes, good. Thank you. I have a proclamation here from the Board of County Commissioners of Seneca County, Ohio. Whereas individuals with dis uh, developmental disabilities, their families, neighbors, coworkers, encourage everyone to focus on the abilities of all people. And whereas the most effective way to increase the awareness is through everyone's active participation in the community activities and the openness to learn and acknowledge each individual's contribution. And whereas policies must be developed, attitude shaped, and opportunities offered for citizens with dis developmental disabilities to live as independently and productively as possible in our community. And whereas we encourage all citizens to support opportunities for people with disabilities that include full access to education, housing, employment, and recreational activities. And now therefore, be it resolved, we the Seneca County Board of Commissioners, Tiffin, Ohio, hereby proclaim the month of March, 2021 as Developmental Disabilities Awareness, Awareness Month and offer full support to efforts that assist people with developmental disabilities to make choices that enable them to live successful lives and realize their potential. And furthermore, I urge all citizens to take time and stand alongside the Opportunity Center to help improve the lives of persons with disabilities to four. In witness thereof, we the Seneca County Board of Commissioners have hereunto set our hands to this proclamation the seventh day of March in the year of our Lord, 2021. Commissioner Shuff, Commissioner Paradiso, and Commissioner Kirshner. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you very much, Tyler. Um, all right. So we'll move on. Uh, Stacy, County Administrator's Report. Sure. Um, let me get my sheets up here. Give you a quick uh, breakdown of the uh, month end reports. Um, the expense report at the end of February, uh, the month to date expenses were $1,567,250.03. Our annual year to date is $3,261,490.09. And our revenue, uh, month to date revenue was $1,259,062.04. And year to date so far, $2,599,574.66. I have- So, so okay. I'll just interject, there are obviously some timing issues with that. We have not uh, posted yet the first half real estate taxes, I think. Correct. Um, which is a significant number. Yep. Um, and uh, really a good look at this will be at the end of the first quarter uh, to get us to know kind of where we're heading. Yep, we do a lot of the expenses at the beginning of the year for our uh, match dollars. So uh, that's why the expenses look a little higher as well. Okay. Thanks. Um, I have, uh, first I'd like to um, congratulate uh, Ken Majors 
Uh, he has been appointed another two year uh, term for the State Board of Emergency Medical, Fire and Transportation Services, the EMS Rural Subcommittee. Um, he's been recognized as a person with respected knowledge and experience and as one who will make a valuable contribution to this committee, uh, they appreciate their willingness to serve. Um, governor will be making the final appointment, hopefully at their next meeting in April. So I'd like to congratulate him for that appointment again. This is your you second term, Ken, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I've been on it. Uh, this is my second term. Congratulations. Yeah. You, Donna. Um, next thing I have, um, I've been getting a few calls from departments um, that uh, will probably start getting requests in again for some travel. You know, as you knew with COVID, um, we had cut travel lines just because there was no travel basically being allowed. Um, you know, the Auditors Association, she, uh, Julie called me yesterday and said that they are going to start allowing in-person meetings again. So um, I expect to see a request for her from her for next week for uh, reinstituting some travel. Uh, just to give you some numbers for, I won't really do last year since we didn't really do any travel last year. But the <laughs> rough cost of travel for all of the general fund has been in between 35 and uh, 40,000 a year. So um, I'm not sure we'll actually get to that full expense this year, but uh, some of those requests might be starting to come in. So we told them at the at budget time that we would take that on a case-by-case uh, -case basis. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Um, our Last year in our audit, uh, there was a recommendation from the state auditor's office that we start implementing the then and now process instead of court orders, uh, just because there was a high amount of court orders. Um, not that there was anything wrong with that, but they suggested using the then and now. Uh, basically what that means is it's the commissioners approving that there, was, there was, wasn't money in place at the time of the expense and that basically the department has come to us and asked for money and the money is in place now. So it wasn't then, but it is now. Um, it runs through the VIP system. So it will be an easier process than the court order process. Any departments can still use that process if that's what they feel comfortable with. Um, we're not gonna deny any court orders, obviously, but uh, uh, the auditor's office went through the steps with me through the VIP system. So it does make the process easier, less paperwork, and um, still acknowledges the, the financial process. So um, I think they're gonna start doing that uh, starting in March. And I told them I'd bring that up. I think it'll make that a smooth process. So um, I th think that's all I have for right now. I will need an executive uh, for personnel at some point, whenever you're ready, uh, for compensation yeah. and uh, employment. Okay, I think we'll try to get through the meeting here and then go on to the executive session. Okay. Uh, for those of those that are interested, there probably will be some action after this executive session uh, that we typically don't have anything, but there probably will be. So we'll try to make it as short as we can and get back. Okay, uh, Commissioner reports. Commissioner Shaw. Yes, thank you, President Kirshner. Um, it's nice to see the snow is melting here and we're degrees and the uh, temperature is getting a little warmer. Um, I know this week and last week we continue to discuss the uh, potential of the HR position. I know Stacy's told us that we've uh, had some uh, candidates step forward with that or turn some applications and resumes, so that's a positive thing. Um, it was nice to see the announcement last week too about the community kitchen. Um, they secured $250,000 from the Ohio Diocese, so Looking forward to seeing that uh, project take off here in downtown. Uh, last week, um, the three commissioners and I, or the two commissioners and I, we uh, went to Paul Elkert's funeral. Um, he was on Tiffin City Council for 20 plus years. I think it was close to 25, but uh, he was a mentor of mine, good family friend, but he always knew where he stood. He was a good uh, public servant. 
uh, somebody I looked up to very much. So thoughts and prayers with his family as they uh, go through that. Um, also had a meeting with uh, Jimmy Flint, Audrey Flood from TSEP uh, about a week, week and a half ago. We're working on some different uh, rural development type projects. Uh, it's a very positive discussion and we'll let you know the details of that as we uh, start to get some that together and finalize that. A um, few businesses out there that are doing some expansions right now, some new businesses coming in, um, not just Tiffin, but some in Fall Story and some out in the rural areas. So uh, TSEP will keep you guys up to date on that, I'm sure. This morning, we had a downtown uh, Tiffin development meeting, very positive. Um, if you guys would mark your calendars on, uh, on March the 20th, they'll be having the St. Patty's Day 5K run slash walk. Um, I'll probably be in the second category, but uh, you can register on that by going to downtown Tiffin 5k.com. So uh, seems like we're starting to get some events rolling here. Hopefully this year we can get back to normal sooner rather than later, but they will be practicing safe distancing, uh, mask wearing, that sort of thing. But uh, if you feel like getting out of the house and getting a little exercise, check out the 5k. Um, also had a meeting with the county engineer this week. We went over some railroad safety concerns that we've had here in the county. So um, we are writing a letter here to the involved parties here to uh, try to get some things remedied, but uh, had a very productive meeting with the county engineer, and I always learn 10 new things every time I'm around him. Um, Mark's been great to work with, and just a uh, uh, lot of knowledge he passes along, so it's always nice uh, getting with him. Um, what else here? Also, wanted to bring it to the commissioner's attention and then maintenance and Stacy. I'm not sure if you guys know, but uh, the other day when I was going down Jefferson Street and I noticed on the courthouse, our clock that faces to the south of town, the light is burned out. I'm not sure if anyone knew that or not, but just wanted to bring it to the group's attention. Um, not sure what the plan was for that or if that's been remedied yet, but uh, just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. And that's all I have, President Kirshner. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Paradiso. Thank you. Uh, with regards to the railroad, uh, Commissioner Schuff uh, is referring to um, uh, several railroad crossings. My comments are on 592, so County Road 592 uh, between State Route 12 and 635. Uh, I brought up a few weeks ago there had been um, uh, numerous uh, complaints with regards to trains blocking the uh, road. Um, I'm pleased to report that um, uh, Engineer Zimmerman has done a great job of uh, putting things together. The sheriff, the prosecutor, uh, Representative Click, State Representative Reinecke, also uh, Carolyn Beck from Congressman Jordan's office have all been part of a conversation. Uh, he's working with uh, the State Railroad Commission, State of Ohio, which is part of ODOT. Uh, Carolyn Bick has made some contacts with Norfolk and Southern uh, people that deal with these things. Um, so I feel confident that uh, the process of uh, dealing with that blockage uh, on 592 is underway. Uh, we want the citizens to know everyone out in that area really is the main, it's the most busiest county road in the that we have that uh, we're working on that. So more to come. Uh, basically, we'll wait to hear back from uh, our engineer, but I appreciate what he's doing. Um, the Advertiser Tribune, Vicki had some nice reports on Tuesday with regards to the museum. Uh, feel real good there that they're proceeding uh, with plans. Looks like maybe the end of May, uh, they could be open. Uh, just wanted to, to mention that. Um, also with regards to uh, uh, the county award from Site Selection Magazine, we, were, we finished fourth in the nation, um, in the nation out of uh, their 5,000 little micropolitan areas. Uh, we fall in with 581. Uh, we finished fourth, Sandusky County finished seventh and Hancock County number one. Um, and as I listened to David Zach speak, and um, I've grown to appreciate the county. I mean, Tyler, you always talk about we represent more than Tiffin. Um, but you know, to, to achieve that countywide award, uh, we need a shout out to Fostory Economic Development for everything they do. We need a shout out to the downtown Tiffin, uh, all the work that's being done in our downtown here. And then you take it out 
to all the townships, villages, Audrey, I know your work in regional planning, David, it's, it's all of that that gets us forth in the nation. Um, so we really appreciate um, everyone working together and, and that recognition, that's pretty exciting. Um, I want to uh, remind everyone today at noon, uh, there will be a ribbon cutting at the Civil War Museum. Uh, drove by there last night through our downtown and it, it was lit up and it was, it was really a cool, there's a cannon there and the, you know, the flag hanging and I really, I got goosebumps actually, it was pretty impressive. So at, 10 or at noon today, the 10 year anniversary will occur. Gary Beatty, the new solid waste district representative or a director, I'm sorry, uh, will be in attendance. I'm going to introduce him. He's coming over to Sankey County trying to uh, meet as many people as he can. He's a war, he's a combat veteran. So the Civil War Museum kind of gets some affinity for that. So um, Gary will be there. Had a meeting with regional planning, uh, Mayor Keckler, Burn Mortar trustee from Eden, myself, Charlene, regional planning, uh, uh, strategic plan session. I thought it was very productive and uh, more to come there. And then um, finally, I wanna mention that we received a, a letter in, uh, regarding EMS, just to remind all the, the people on the call that uh, all three commissioners realize and are actively um, supporting in discussion um, on helping um, improve and solidify EMS in our county. We have a scheduled open meeting uh, on the second Tuesday of the month uh, or Monday of the month. So this Monday stays on the 8th. We're going to uh, uh, discuss moving it to the first Thursday, but for indefinitely going forward, we will have a monthly EMS uh, meeting, not part of this time, but a separate meeting uh, uh, to talk EMS. That said, we have five uh, formal EMS districts uh, within our county, uh, among other EMS uh, delivery systems, but the Bascom Joint Ambulance District, uh, the Bascom, one of the five, they sent us a letter. And uh, the letter came from their board. So the, the board of Bascom is made up of Jim Klaus, Kevin Reinhardt, and Kathy Frankert. Uh, those three, we've, they've been uh, in constant communication with us. Uh, we feel um, we have a, a good working relationship with them, but they uh, sent us a letter basically uh, requesting that um, they uh, be allowed to hire their own EMS people versus use the county uh, EMS people as we continue to formulate and, and um, finalize the long-term plan for the county. So I just want to make an announcement that, you know, in general, I think um, I'm okay with that. Um, I would like Bascom to keep an open mind to attend the meetings going forward and continue to discuss the long-term uh, vision of EMS. We're not at a point where um, I think we're ready to uh, do that or draw lines in the sand or anything like that. I mean, I think we've got a positive momentum going forward and I'd like Bascom to continue to be part of that along with all the other stakeholders. But with regards to uh, hiring a person, um, I, I mean, generally I'm okay with it. Um, I'm not sure what the other two commissioners think and maybe we can discuss this on Monday if, if needed, but I did want to bring it up in this meeting. That's it. Back to you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. We have also uh, been, um, uh, we have formed a subcommittee, if you will, uh, regarding state budgets. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, and there's no reason for you to, but the, uh, the state of Ohio does an operating budget one year, which is the odd year. It's 2021 in this case. 2022 is the capital budget. Uh, we in Senate County in the past have not been at the uh, cutting edge of the budget, if you will. So we are preparing 
uh, projects uh, that will be uh, ready for review with estimates, et cetera, for the 2022 budget, uh, capital budget. Uh, we have a number of um, buildings. We have a number of uh, infrastructure items that we would like to present. No promises as far as what we can do, but we in the past, we've always kind of been there as a uh, Johnny come lately. We want to be more proactive and uh, make certain that our requests are on the table at the time that the budget is reviewed. Uh, the committee consists of the mayor of uh, State Senator Reinecke, of uh, State Representative Click, um, uh, of economic development folks, uh, and a, a hybrid of uh, the folks that are handling uh, uh, our lobbying efforts for us. So uh, we want to let everyone know that we're trying to be proactive with this and hopefully there'll be some nice announcements regarding Seneca County receiving uh, our share of the state funding. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what uh, we've been up to for the past week. Okay. Um, Anything else? Any other questions? Any other comments? Yeah, Mike. Not, yeah. Yes, go. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just one more thing. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad Tony highlighted on it. Here are my notes here about the uh, Seneca County ranking fourth nationally. I mean, that's it. Really, is a big deal. Um, it's our tenth year where we've been in the top ten. I mean, companies really do take a look at that site selection magazine when they're looking to locate a company. Um, and the thing that impresses me is over the last decade, we've had really good teamwork here with economic development, the city, the county, Faustoria. But I mean, I'd also like to thank the uh, boards of the factories. Um, a lot of these people with their management skills, like to thank the workers. Um, a lot of that goes behind some of these expansions too, because they weren't doing what they were doing. Um, they might not always be growing. So we got a good workforce here in Tiffin and good leadership at these uh, factories as well. So I'd like to Kind of give them some thanks as well. Yeah, and that goes on with the capital budgets to stay too. We've got a good story to tell, which we do. Uh, it assists in having a little bit of attention paid to a county that is uh, that's growing uh, and that is prosperous uh, and it's working hard for economic development. So that's always a good thing to have in your quiver. It's uh, a good arrow to have when you're talking to all the uh, elected officials. Okay, old business. Stacy, do we have anything on the old business side? I don't have any, nope. Okay, so the next, uh, the next item under new business or the first item under new business is a kind of a 20, 20 year in view. What I'm gonna do is try to get through this relatively quickly, but uh, Jimmy Flint uh, has put together kind of a review of 2020. Um, and that's going to come up on the screen now. I'm going to do, you know, four or five pages quickly. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Tony to kind of do four or five pages and then Tyler. Uh, then I'll try to wrap it up. But I'll start. We did give this presentation to Job and Family Services the other day. And I'll start this conversation off the same way I did there. And that is one of the worst investments anybody has made uh, over for a while is a 2020 planner. Right. We that kind of blew up uh, in March of last year. Uh, so uh, everybody had to be agile and kind of move forward. But the three themes uh, we had entering into 2020 before the pandemic, you know, was to make certain that we had continuity in the county, that we continued with the collaboration uh, as, it, as it related to issues, and that we make certain that there is constant communication. And I think that we've come a long way in uh, making certain that that happened. Uh, we, was, when it relates to communication, you know, we used to have two or three or maybe five people in our meetings uh, on, a, on a Thursday. Uh, and now because of technology and the ability to, uh, to Facebook it live and to have people uh, come in, uh, there's an average of a uh, uh, significantly higher number than that. I don't know, Jimmy, maybe you can jump in there. I mean, there's 35 or 40 yeah. people. Yeah, there's 50, you know, almost 50 today uh, between Facebook Live and and in the Zoom meeting. Yeah. And so it's that, usually that, that or even more sometimes. And that's great, you know, that we have this transparency. Uh, let's go on here. Of course, the fourth C that we didn't anticipate was the COVID. Um, and uh, kind of had to work on the fly. You know, I mean, the what we've said, you know, a hundred times is that uh, most of the things that we discuss aren't really our first rodeo. Well, this one is. 
so we had to really uh, be agile and, and try to do what we could. Uh, we did declare a state of emergency, uh, approve, or approve the state of emergency from the uh, state of Ohio on uh, March 26th. And that's why we're doing what we're doing now, and that is online meetings. Uh, so when it comes to continuity, uh, we want to make sure that we continue to be fiscally responsible. Uh, we want to make sure that we continue to invest in vital community services. Uh, the number of support teams and systems that are already in place. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We just want to make sure that we keep talented and dedicated people here. And we need to continue our focus on planning. Uh, this is kind of a breakdown of uh, where the money goes in the different departments and elections offices. I'll not go through that in detail, just uh, know that it's up and available for your review at any time. So, you know, Ken was uh, elected to the board statewide, and we're very proud of the folks that we have in Seneca County. That was mentioned earlier. Mark uh, Zimmerman, he's been mentioned a couple of times today. He was chosen as 2020 Engineer of the Year uh, for the entire state. Uh, Frank LaRose's office praises the Senate County Board of Elections for its stunning work uh, in upgrading its systems, and we're so proud of them. Uh, the Clerk of Court's office received a $202,000 technology grant. Uh, last year, Julie Atkins was named uh, Auditor of the Year, and uh, we also had uh, Kathy Oliver and Job and Family Services being recognized for her work. So we are so very proud of our team members. Um, and I apologize if I missed anyone's awards, but uh, we know that we've got great people across the entire county. So we wanna make sure that we continue with our strategic planning efforts. Uh, you know, the saying is plan your work and work your plan. Uh, we did finalize the master's facility plan that plan inventoried all county owned buildings and outlined potential futures for them. The Gossman Group went a long way in helping us with that. We reviewed uh, and uh, accepted the countywide plan. Uh, the, the, we de began developing this plan in 2018. Uh, we had more than 150 strategies. The plans included sections for all participants in Seneca County. Uh, it also included the city of Tiffin, Foster Economic Development, and the Seneca County Park District. Tony, I'll let you take it over from here and talk about the slides that are coming up. Okay, thanks. Um, I want to add a name to your list there, uh, Commissioner. Uh, Tim Lynch, uh, uh, maybe necessarily did not receive an award, but he was, he just came off of serving the State of Ohio Township Association president. Now, that's a big deal for the entire state. He was the uh, president of the Township Association, so um, kudos to him. And uh, this presentation uh, reminds me a little bit of uh, Commissioner Thomas's final uh, words uh, as he left. He's, he's like, you know, you, you don't come into this office as commissioner and, and necessarily change everything. It's more you accept the baton from the people before you, and then you continue to go and then pass, you know, that work and your work on to the next person. So I feel a lot like that. I, I want to give Commissioner Kirshner a lot of credit for um, several years back, uh, beginning the process of a plan, beginning the process of uh, understanding our facilities. Um, and um, now that we're doing that, uh, it's, it's really exciting. And I think we're getting more done. We're going to be able to leverage grants, et cetera. So, um, Looking back on 2020, even in the pandemic, we were able to accomplish all those things uh, and rank fourth. Um, and a lot of that is because we do have a business friendly environment. You know, when people have choices when they want to build something, relocate, add on, and we want to be uh, there for them to answer all their questions and uh, hopefully they, they can choose to be here. So, um, an advocacy for local uh, legislators. We just, I guess the bottom line of this slide in collaboration is we have a good working relationship uh, throughout the county with all the stakeholders. Uh, Jimmy, partnering with uh, business and community. Again, uh, Commissioner Kirshner always mentions private um, public partnerships. Um, here's an example, a slide of National Machinery. Early on when 
mask were impossible to get. Um, uh, Mr. Cal now was able to, uh, with his connections in China, get masks here, get them out to John's Bar at EMA and, and out into our first responders. Uh, just one example of that. Um, Land Bank uh, is another. Um, next, partnering with county agencies. Um, you know, that's how it works. We're getting ready to go out to Opportunity Park. Um, uh, Lou's on the phone uh, from School of Opportunity. We have Sarah from the Park Services. Uh, we have uh, Soil and Water. Um, we have uh, you know, Job and Family. We have the engineer. We're all going to work out there uh, and get together and collaborate and just really make that campus much better than it is. And what triggered that is our grant for the Opportunity uh, Park. And so those discussions are going to start very soon. I think next week there's a meeting planned. Um, so that's an example of everybody working together and, and, and making an impact. Um, in 2020, looking back, the, the Attica Veterans Memorial, we've talked about that several times. It is pretty awesome. Uh, the block grant from regional planning. Um, this community kitchen downtown Tiffin is just, just, I don't even know how to, words to describe it. It's such a, an awesome um, asset to our county uh, and it's going to serve so many people. And again, there's a church, a congregation with people and downtown people, local people working together. Um, and, uh, you know, Senka County EMA, hats off to John Spar. Uh, as soon as we complete one plan, he brings up, we have to do another plan. Um, that's all good. Feeling good about the museum. Just a uh, just nice to look back. Thanks. Next, Jimmy. Um, uh, I'll, leave, I'll just skip this over, but basically, you know, we have great rapport with our state uh, rep and our state senator, and that really helps in uh, bringing money back to our county. Also, Congressman Jordan. I don't want to um, leave him out of the picture. Um, he does stop by. He'll be in town in a few weeks. Um, Carolyn Beck, his representative for our area, is always takes my call, always has an answer to whatever curveball we throw at her. And we really, really appreciate that effort and that relationship. There's a picture I had the opportunity, I'll toot my horn a little bit, to go to Whirlpool when uh, President Trump was there. And that was a, a neat event. And, and politics aside, you just can't believe how many people from Seneca County work at Whirlpool. And, and how many other businesses are affected by Whirlpool being uh, just across the border. Uh, you know, so it was a pretty neat experience. Celebrating our achievements. I think it's good that we, uh, you know, that, that Jimmy pushes it out, that Nick Dutro from TSEP, uh, Foster Economic Development, really everybody, it's, it's okay to stop and, and pause and celebrate your, your successes because, you know, it, this is, this is really, really good stuff. Um, and I think we need to just keep doing it. Everyone's always welcome to our meetings. We can light the courthouse. You can give your, your presentation. We, we welcome hard work, good news, anything to help our county. And, uh, Jimmy, I want to give you a hats off as I, uh, get out there. I, I know your job, you're paid by the county to do what you do and you're doing a great job, but you're doing a lot of extra things. Um, and you're on various committees after hours, you're taking on new projects. And I think that really helps stimulate, for example, the museum, they want to do something where they know they, they have Jimmy to start with. Um, I, I think this is all good. And so collaboration with communication, Dale DePew, the radio stations, Vic, you do a great job. Um, it's huge. And, you know, I think we should, <laughs> we're blessed to have that. Not every small county, every small town has a local newspaper, a radio station, um, a person like Dale with his daily um, and, and, a, and a public relations person like Jimmy. And that also helps all of us um, you know, uh, build more success. So we appreciate that. Thank you, Commissioner. Do you want me to go to the next slide? Yes. Over to Tyler now. Sure. 
Thank you. All right, uh, amplifying the voices here of our uh, citizens. The board approved a resolution here affirming its steadfast support for the Second Amendment in response to a uh, request from Ohio Stands United. Uh, the non-binding symbiotic uh, gesture sent a strong message to the state and federal lawmakers that the county opposed any restriction on the rights guaranteed by the Constitution. Uh, in January, the response to pleas from citizens, the board uh, penned a letter to the Ohio Department of Transportation uh, leading to a traffic study of the dangerous intersection at US 224 and State Route 67. Uh, several meetings were held to open the lines of communication on the future of Seneca County EMS. In 2014, SCEMS had 140 volunteers. 2020, the roster had dwindled to 74, with about 40 going on runs last year. The commissioners are aiming to work with local EMS leaders to find a way to supplement the remaining volunteers and to provide the best, most efficient EMS services possible. Celebrating our local institutions and people. In 2020, we thanked many groups, including local educators, school counselors, and school therapy dogs. Uh, shout, out, shout out to uh, Corbin Height, who was the first Tiffin Columbian student to qualify for the International Science Fair. Congratulations. Uh, we gave recognition to Andrew Steinmetz of Troop 442 out of Republic for becoming an Eagle Scout. We also cheered on as uh, Calvert Volleyball won their second state title in the past few years and uh, also recorded a video in honor of them. Focus on transparency and accessibility. In 2020, we aim to lead the state in transparency and accessibility. We believe we accomplished this by hosting online <clears throat> election coverage, helping the Seneca County General Health District to host a video press conference and COVID-19 briefings and by improving our website and social media offerings. Live video coverage during the primary and general elections in 2020 garnered nearly about 20,000 views. The silver lining of a difficult year was the ability for people to watch our meetings on their cell phones, computers, tablets. Uh, they could do this at home. This led to thousands of people witnessing county business at the source. We plan to continue offering this service even as we begin to meet in person again. Uh, me personally, I'm looking forward to getting back to in-person meetings. Uh, it's been a strange year for everybody, but I think the one silver lining, like you said in that slide, was that uh, even if people can't make it to the physical meetings, they can watch from home. Seneca County Commissioner Anthony Paradiso hosted the second Coffee with the Commissioner event in Fostoria in February. And uh, I, I also attended that as well. Um, those are good events, and I hope we continue to do those as well. COVID-19, although COVID-19 created many challenges in 2020, it also displayed how effective the three C's could be. Continuity, collaboration, and communication were even more important as we navigated the global pandemic. Making careful budgetary decisions in a time of uncertainty. Also facing great adversity the, uh, and adapting to overcome difficult circumstances. Managing the CARES Act program uh, helped a lot of people. Three C's during COVID-19. Looking back at 2020 from March on nearly, everything that occurred was affected by, in some way by COVID-19. Continuity, we uh, continue to learn to lean on our uh, team and our people. Collaboration, we worked internally and externally to navigate the pandemic together. As far as communication goes, uh, effective communication has been paramount during this time of the health crisis. And we worked with other county agencies to spread the word as effectively as possible. Our office used press releases, audio, video, in partnership with the media agencies to keep our citizens informed. Like Tony said earlier, um, between the AT, the radio station, Facebook, social media, uh, the daily um, communication was key. And I think uh, we've seen that throughout the pandemic. Making careful budgetary decisions during COVID-19. On April 7th, the Seneca County Budget Commission cut its general fund revenue estimate by 2 million. By April 23rd, the commission made 20% reductions to salary slash wage lines and cut contracts, travel in half and supply lines. The county launched a shared work program to assist those who had hours cut or lost their jobs because of the difficult financial situation. Decisive decision-making following the lead of state government helped protect the county's economic situation during a very uncertain time. CARES Act overview. In all, 
In all, the county received nearly $3.5 million in federal CARES Act funding to help deal with the health crisis. Some money was used internally to help manage the pandemic. Expenditures included deep cleaning, investment in personnel protective equipment, digital thermometer scanners, automatic doors, remote, working, remote work equipment, refrigerators and a generator for vaccine storage and emergency radio equipment. The board also committed $1.25 million to assist small businesses, residents, and nonprofits. The commissioners partnered with the Great Lakes Community Action Partnership, Tiffin Seneca Economic Partnership, Fostoria Economic Development Corporation, Tiffin Seneca United Way, and the Seneca County Department of Job and Family Services to disperse the funds with, <clears throat> with additional money for townships, villages, and Tiffin and Fostoria. About 1.5 million was expended through the county CARES program alone. In Seneca County, 139 small businesses and nonprofit organizations and 493 households received assistance through the Seneca County CARES Act. Assistance for small businesses, people and nonprofits, Great Lakes Community Action Partnership assisted 287 households with rent, mortgage, water and sewer payments, the Tiffin Seneca Economic Partnership assisted with 126 small businesses with 846,000 I'm sorry, 846, 846,000 in funding. Fostoria Economic Development Corporation assisted 13 businesses and nonprofits within Seneca, Seneca County portion uh, of Fostoria. The total of that came out to $109,000. Also helped 13 others through the City of Fostoria program totaling $116,000. $569 in expenditures. Tiffin Seneca United Way assisted 92 households with utility bills, mortgage and rent payments, and property taxes. Seneca County Department of Job and Family Services assisted 114 households by distributing $92,240.14 to assist with car, utility, and mortgage slash rent payments. And hey, Commissioner Shuff, there's a typo on this. It was actually 186 small businesses through TSEP, so I want to make sure that we get that right. And then this is the last slide for you. 2021 outlook, welcoming new elected officials, uh, Commissioner Tyler Shelf and Sheriff Fred Stevens, supporting the voices of our residents through advocacy and Ohio Senate Bill 52, uh, also known as the Reinecke referendum, a sustained focus on continuity, collaboration, and communication, online meetings, and the hybrid focus as COVID-19 cases continue to decline and continue to work on our strategic plan. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. I think it's important to note on the CARES Act money that that was, uh, it was discretionary use on the part of the county. Uh, and by that, I mean the county could have used all of the money they received uh, internally uh, to make improvements or to uh, do whatever was necessary to uh, help us through the COVID uh, disaster, for lack of a better word. Many counties did not disperse any money to individuals throughout, throughout their counties. We decided to take uh, significant dollars, one and a half million dollars of those and allow uh, different agencies, five of them in this case, to help the most vulnerable, to help those the most affected uh, by this pandemic. So my congratulations to Commissioner Paradiso, to Commissioner Thomas, uh, for their forward-looking uh, decision to make certain that those, again, who were the most vulnerable at least had an opportunity. We affected, hopefully, a number of folks' lives, a number of families' lives by assisting them through a pretty tough time. So I'm, I'm real proud of that. I mean, it wasn't our money. The money came from the federal government. It's always our money. It's always tax money. But uh, to have it dispersed to those that really need it, I think is significant. Uh, Commissioner, I, I have one comment I've, I've been thinking here as we went through the presentation. We talk a lot about collaboration and, and working together. Uh, I want to commend and thank the elected officials throughout the county. Um, for those on the call, uh, they, they are elected. They have their own uh, interest and budgets and people. And when we as commissioners brought everybody together, um, and we had discussions about cuts and um, closing buildings and those kind of things. Um, 
it's my first time through an experience like this, but I, but I have to say I was pleasantly surprised and very appreciative as to their um, ability to uh, understand the situation and to work with us. And again, that's another example of um, all of us working together. So I do wanna highlight that for 2020 since that um, made things a little smoother and really attributed to uh, a lot of the positive things that happened. So thank you. I wanted to thank Jimmy for putting that slide together. It was very professionally done. Um, I don't know if I would have remembered all those numbers off the top of my head, but uh, thank you to Jimmy for putting that together. And I think that's a good uh, resource for the people. And if we can get that out there on social media, I think that uh, help a lot of people see what's yeah. going on. Absolutely. Thanks, Commissioner. Yeah, this will, uh, I'm going to send out, there's also an article version that I put together. I got some quotes from some of the commissioners. We're going to put that out. Uh, so that'll be available on our website and on our Facebook. If you just search Center County Commission make sure and follow us for all the latest information on county data. Thank you for what you do. Yep. Well, we did go through that relatively quickly. So again, it's posted on our website, posted on our Facebook page. Um, please um, take some time and, and review it. Stacy, what other new business do we have here? New business. Um, I have a supplemental appropriation to the uh, COVID uh, equipment line for $59,411.70. Uh, this is some uh, carryover money that uh, we reduced for 2020 expenses and needed to reappropriate for 2021. I have, uh, let's see, I have a resolution authorizing amendment number two for the engineering service agreement with Stantac Taxiway Repairs. Uh, the increase is uh, $2,962.57. You know, we had to uh, change the project up a little bit, get some drainage in there. So there was uh, an, an, an amendment that needed done. Um, I have a resolution rescinding the board's orders of February 25th. Uh, resolution 2140, setting time, date, and place to receive sealed bids uh, or proposals for Crossway for the general contractor. Uh, after reviewing that again, they've decided to hire the engineer and go through that process instead of the general contractor. Um, I think it's a, a quicker process. So um, they don't do these projects very often. So um, they thought they wanted to go one way, we're going to do the other. So uh, I think that's all the resolutions I have. Okay. I will accept the motion for the supplemental appropriations and for the uh, amendments and the rescission of uh, board order. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Nikki. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Pediso? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Okay, so what we'll do, uh, we are going to go into executive session after we uh, have uh, public comment. Uh, there may very well be some action after this executive session, as I had stated earlier. So uh, we'll go to public comment. Jimmy, you can uh, go through the routine here. Sure. So if you'd like to come forward during public comment, you can hit the unmute button there on your screen. If you're on the phone line, you can uh, just dial in star six and that will unmute your line. And if you'd like to do that, you can do that now. I see Miss Audrey. Good morning, commissioners. Um, just a couple of things from us today. Um, first, congratulations on a very impressive year in review. Um, you guys have all you know, done a lot of great work over the last year, even though it was a very um, you know, atyp atypical year. And you know, all of us over at, at TSEP definitely appreciate your continued support and collaboration so that we can all you know, work together. So thank you for that. And congrats on a great uh, year in review. Um, a couple items from us, uh, the jobs and investment survey for businesses to, um, you know, let us know how they're doing and what they have going on um, is still open. It will be closing very soon, but um, that is still open. I will drop a link to that in the chat as I did last week. So please keep encouraging businesses to fill that out as soon as possible. Um, we also, uh, Amy wanted us to remind you from the downtown that if you would like to register for the 5k event, if you'd like a t-shirt, you need to do that by tomorrow. 
Um, you can still register after that, but you won't get a t-shirt. So see uh, the downtown page or Amy for that. And then lastly, um, thank you so much to all the commissioners for um, mentioning our uh, our press conference and our big events uh, announcement about the the fourth place ranking in the nation. Um, we're, we're very proud of, again, all the collaboration that it took between all of us uh, to, to make that happen. And you can find some more detailed information about that on our website and on our Facebook as well. That was um, definitely the highlight of our week. So um, are there any questions for TSEP today? Thank you. Okay, hearing none, thank you again, as always, Audrey. Uh, okay, uh, anyone else out there? Yep, Commissioner, we have Charlene Watkins from Regional Planning. Yes, please, Charlene, go ahead. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, great report for 2020, echoing exactly what Audrey said. It's just impressive and wonderful to work with you guys. Um, on another happy note, I am here to introduce our new planning and administrative assistant who um, took over for Isabel. We hired Laura Payne. She started last week on Monday, and she, had, she came back on Monday of this week, so I think she's going to stay. So we're excited and we want to introduce her to you and um, give you the opportunity to stop in and visit and meet her and ask her any question you'd like. So welcome aboard, Lori. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else out there? <laughs> okay, hearing nothing, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel. So moved. Second. Okay, so gonna, we will. We're gonna try something different. There's called breakout rooms. So Jimmy's okay. got that set up and it's supposed to allow us to go into a separate room and keep this open. So. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this button. It should send you guys into the executive session. All right. We need to do roll call first. Okay, then Nikki, you go ahead. Let's do roll call. Commissioner Chef? Present. Commissioner Paradiso? Present. Commissioner yes. yes, I am still present as well. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, hit the button. Okay, I just hit the button, you guys should be able to join. And Ken, I think you're supposed to go into, yeah, okay. All right, looks like they're all in there. So I will leave this up for now. And when they're back, uh, we'll get back to it. Uh, Nikki there? I just hit the record. Yep, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay, it is uh, Tony and the Tyler with us? Yep. Okay. Well, it's yep. I'm here. I'm here. It's 11, it's 1144. And we are out of executive session. Um, is there any motion, any action from executive session we'd like to take at this point? Well, I have the one um, hiring uh, Mary Zimmerman um, as the uh, paramedic, full-time paramedic. She's a current ECHO unit. So the title is basically amending the board's orders of September 12, 2019, hiring Mary Zimmerman as an intermittent, changing her to a full-time effective uh, today. Okay, I will accept a motion for that. So move. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Right. Commissioner Shaw. Yes. yes. Commissioner Pradiso. Yes. Commissioner Kirshner. Yes. Yes. Any other action from executive session? Okay. We discussed uh, 
employee salaries for the county. Uh, we've had this discussion for two or three weeks now. Uh, is there any action anyone wants to take with that? Yes, I'd like to uh, uh, just mention that we put a lot of thought into it. I want to thank Stacy for providing us a lot of uh, numbers. Um, we have a couple corrections to make from last year as we go into this year. Um, I, uh, I, somebody needs to meet your line, Jimmy. Got a feedback I can't hear. Yeah, I think that, that was Nikki. I think we're good now. All right, thank you. And uh, so I, uh, um, I'd like to uh, uh, make a motion that we, uh, we increase salary lines by 3% uh, effective 20 for 2021, but we uh, do it in two parts. Um, that uh, 2% would be, um, and Stace, I might need some help with uh, with you on how to explain this, but the 2% would be the baseline that we would use going into next year. The 3% would be available for this year. Um, so uh, that extra percent, um, given the fact we had a better year than we thought, um, and uh, I'm good with the 3%, but I'd like to break it down in two parts. Okay, so the 1% would be an immediate uh, one-time check to uh, the members at the discretion of the electeds and the department heads, and the two percent would be an ongoing increase in salary, retro to one one twenty one. Is that what I understand? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. I'll All second right. that motion. Okay. Any additional discussion? Hearing none. Nikki. Commissioner Shaw. Yes. Commissioner Paradiso. Yes. Commissioner Kirshner. Yes. And I will have okay. the actual supplementals ready for you for next week. Since Thank you. Change. Okay. So anything else to be brought before the commission? Uh, hearing nothing, I will adjourn this meeting at 1148. Thank you. Thank you.